Hello, Jay here. I hope the road trip video to the Ash Waste weekend stirred up some interest in the event. I have a video today talking about Peter's fighting pit table and how it was used during the weekend. This time on JD in the Sump Sea. One of the coolest things about the Ash Waste Weekend is how people from all over the country come to lacrosse to play Necromunda for three days. It's a three-day campaign, which includes at least six games of Necromunda. Last year's Ash Waste Weekend was a mostly straightforward Ash Waste campaign right out of the book, with just some minor tweaks. This year we played an Outlander campaign from Book of the Outcast, but it was set out in the Ash Waste so vehicles were allowed and weather conditions were used if the players wanted to use them. The games were played on large 6x4 foot tables with a lot of beautiful terrain provided by several of the attendees and the organizers. This particular table was the Fighting Pits. Peter came for, to the event from over 2400 miles away just to play some Necromunda, to run this board, and to see his friends, and we all appreciated it greatly. He built this board to be used between official games and later in the evenings if people wanted to play more Necromunda. Everyone who came to the Ash Waste weekend was required to also bring an additional model to be used as a pit fighter for the fighting pits that Peter would then control. Peter would select a pit fighter and have the four other players bring one of their fighters as their gang's champion and fight to the death, or out of action as the case may be in Necromunda. The results of the lasting injury roll would stand, so death was possible, and if the result was captured, then they would become a pit fighter themselves. At the beginning of the Ash Waste weekend, if someone began with extra credits, they would tell the money handler and he would give them the fake money in that amount. Between games, they would update him with the results of their game, but they would also get or give back their fake money depending on what they wanted to do in the post-battle sequence. Anyone could then use that fake money to bet on the fights at the fighting pits. Anyone who was actually involved in the fight or anybody who was just a bystander could bet on the fights. Peter encouraged as much of this as possible and used the fact that he was the house to his advantage. He set up each fight by having everyone roll for priority each round by counting 1, 2, 3, GO to get everyone all hyped up. He would set up the terrain in the pit differently between each match, and there were hazards in the fighting pits that would randomly occur at different times. He would have someone roll a pair of D8s. These would correspond to the grid of circles on the floor of the fighting pits, and that's where the hazards would pop up. The hazards could be swirling columns of blades, or swirling columns with morning stars on them. There were also spikes, exploding barrels, and acid tubs just waiting for someone to get thrown into them from an elevated walkway. The spectators could also throw things at the combatants by rolling the hit and then using Strike 3 to resolve the hits. At one point I had my champion, the mutant James the Great, enter the fighting pits. He promptly released two bomb rats and then died by an ogre in charge. The rats then got revenge by blowing up several turns later and wounding the ogre and the other combatant. The fighting pits were a great way to get more Necromunda in between games, and D really did take advantage of it playing many, many pit fights and Mike also took advantage of it, at one point throwing Ogren after Ogren into the pits, only to have four of them die one after the other. The fighting pits were a great idea as a concept, and how that concept was executed worked really well and added a lot to the weekend. Thanks a lot for bringing the pits and running them, Peter. Well, that's all I've got this time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.